further ado, I would like to introduce Jatan, the CEO and co-founder of PlanetScale, who will be talking to us about the test today. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Chris. And thank you all for being here this Monday morning of Veterans Day. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is how to spin up um, clusters that are jurisdiction aware. More and more uh, jurisdictions are passing data locality laws. And what we are going to look at today is how you can build clusters that are jurisdiction aware, but which you can build without changing the application logic. So your applications continues to think that it's talking to a single monolithic database, whereas depending on some marker of locality, your data can be distributed in the correct uh, jurisdiction. So that's what we are gonna talk about. A quick uh, introduction about myself. Um, most of my career, I have been a backend infrastructure engineer at companies like Google, YouTube, Dropbox, and the United States Digital Service. At YouTube, I manage the SRE and DBA teams. These are the groups that operated Vitesse clusters at pretty massive scale uh, at YouTube. Um, Planet Scale is a company that me and Sugu Sugumaran, who is the chief engineer behind uh, and the founder of the Vitesse open source project. We both founded Planet Scale in February, 2018. We are a venture backed company uh, backed by Anderson Horowitz and Signal Fire. We are about 30 employees, mostly in Mountain View. And of course we are hiring. <laughs> and uh, with that, I'm going to give it to Chris uh, who wants to talk a little bit about the upcoming KubeCon. Yes, it is the week before KubeCon and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Uh, KubeCon is next week, everybody. Uh, there are still tickets available, I believe. There are still day zero events that you can get uh, into right now. So. Grab your tickets, enjoy KubeCon and it's San Diego glory. Uh, I'm in Detroit, it's snowing, we're gonna get six inches, so I cannot wait. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> also, uh, CNCF is setting up Kubernetes forums. These are, uh, think of them as like small KubeCons, but very like regionally based, so everybody gets as much knowledge as possible. Uh, there are two here that were uh, coming up here in December, Sydney and Seoul. Uh, sponsorships are available still, and I believe tickets are still available for both events uh, as of right now. Uh, please check them out, um, learn more about them, and we'll have more of those here in the near future. Yeah, and just to talk a little bit more about the forum events in Seoul and Sydney, me and another engineer from uh, Planet Scale Deep Sea would both be at both these events. So come there and get some more of it as goodness. Yes. And uh, before we kick off, I would also like to invite all of you uh, at an event that PlanetScale is putting together with AWS um, and Vitesse uh, at, uh, on, on, on Monday, November 18th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, there are uh, de more details on our uh, social media and on our on our web page and so on so please come and attend we would love to have, we would love to see you there and now without further ado um, i would like to jump into uh, the webinar so here is the agenda for today um, what i'll be covering uh, in the beginning is talk a little bit about the vitess architecture and concepts that we need for building uh, jurisdiction aware clusters. Then we, I'll present the problem. Uh, we will think through and talk through the cluster design. And finally, I'll show you a, a live demo. Um, so let's talk a, talk a little bit about the Vitesse architecture. Those of you who know Vitesse probably know this diagram fairly well. Everything on the left-hand side of the green line is uh, in an application server which thinks that everything on the right-hand side of the green line is just one humongous MySQL database. Uh, those application servers talk to VT gates using the MySQL binary protocol. VT gates are stateless proxies. They have, they implement the MySQL, um, uh, the full uh, uh, SQL parser so that they look at your where clause and depending on the where clause, they send the queries to each shard. 
We are going to go into a fair amount of detail about what a shard is, uh, but each shard is basically a, a traditional MySQL cluster um, and uh, with masters and replicas, um, but each MySQL D in the cluster gets a minder process for VT tablet that does the job of protecting the MySQL D. And it protects it by doing a connection pooling, um, adding uh, row limits, um, by doing adding timeouts for transactions, timeouts for um, uh, uh, queries, uh, and, and so on. Basically, under uh, even for a single sharded database, it's impossible to write a query of death if it's running under uh, under Vitesse. All of the cluster topology is saved in the what is what we call a log server or a topology server. This can either be an HCD cluster or a Zookeeper cluster or a Council cluster. VTCTLD is a, a is the control plane that gives you a web UI. We will be interacting with this during the demo, and it also gives you an API server where your command lines can uh, talk to. And um, this is the overall architecture of Vites. What is not shown here is the dimension of cells. So for any shard, this collection of the uh, master and the replicas that constitute that shard can be distributed across multiple cells. Um, so keep this in mind as we go further in the demo. Um, anybody has any questions about the architecture? No, we are uh, no questions right now. All right, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about what a cell is, right? So a cell is a group of servers and network infrastructure. It's a failure domain isolated from failures in other cells. Um, and you can define a cell depending on, how, you know, depending on how you're running and what makes sense to you. So a, a full data center could be a cell. Uh, it could be a subset of a data center. It, you know, it can be a region or an availability zone. It could be a Kubernetes cluster. It could even be a rack in a data center. So a failure domain, which is basically a group of servers and network infrastructure that is isolated from failures in other cells. That's what a cell is. And if you think about this, uh, this is the representation of physical infrastructure, which means that there is a physical location associated with it, which means that you can locate this in a jurisdiction. So the mapping between the geographical location of your data is sort of represented by a cell in, in a Vitesse cluster. So keep this at the back of your mind. The next concept that I want to talk about is the key space. So a key space in Vitesse parlance, so as you know, Vitesse deals with sharded databases. And um, a key space is a logical database. If a key space has only one shard, then it's exactly identical to a MySQL database. But if you are using sharding, a key space is multiple SQL databases, MySQL databases, all with identical schema, right? In either case, a key space appears as a single database from the standpoint of the application. So application uh, can think uh, that it's talking to a single humongous uh, database. It doesn't need to be aware that it's talking to a sharded database. So that's what a key space is. Now let's talk a little bit about what a key space ID is, right? Um, so key space is sharded by key space ID ranges and each row is assigned a key space ID. So key space ID is basically a street, street address of a row, right? And uh, it's used to decide on which shard a given row lives, right? Uh, if you are familiar with NoSQL databases, uh, which are basically key value uh, databases, then it's an equivalent of NoSQL sharding key. The reason that I have st stricken out that row is because we, we do not save this key space ID anywhere, right? It's internal to Vitesse. The application does not need to know anything about it. And it's not stored, but computed. So, uh, we'll talk about this, uh, how this is done in the next slide. But key space ID is this, uh, uh, each row has it. And depending on the value of the key space ID for that row, you decide which shard that particular row goes to. 
it's not stored but computed. Those are the things that you need to keep in mind about a key space ID. Um, now let's talk about another concept called V index or Vindex, right? And it's basically a way to compute the key space ID for any row in a table, right? So a Vindex for a table is defined by two things. One is a column name, and that's the, that's the column that you want to use to shard data in that table by. And the second is the sh name of a sharding function. So there are six or seven sh sharding functions that are predefined in Vitesse and you can add your own. So we'll talk a little more about sharding functions in the next, uh, in the next uh, slide, but this equality uh, holds where the you know, key space ID for a row equal to the value uh, computed using the uh, column value for that row as an input in the sharding function. So key space ID equal to F of the value for row in that column. Okay, so for example, if you have a table called customer and a sharding column that you're using is ID and a sharding function is hash, then for a row where the ID is one, two, three, key space ID would be hash of one, two, three, right? Straightforward. Um, now let's talk about what a shard is. So each shard represents a key space ID, or ID range. range. So each shard has a begin value and end value. And if begin value less than key space ID, less than end value for a particular row, then that row belongs in that shard, right? So that's what a shard is um, in terms of key space ranges. Each shard has one master and multiple replicas. And the thing to remember is that a shard can be located in one, on, one or more cells. Uh, so these replicas and masters that constitute a particular shard can live in uh, one or more physical cells. Um, and we talked about, we, we said that a Vindex is basically a combination of a column and uh, a sharding function. And so these are the sharding functions that are uh, predefined in Vitesse, uh, binary MD5, uh, hash, numeric, numeric static map, um, Unicode lose MD5. So if you basically have a um, uh, int or a long, uh, long int as your uh, column on which you want to shard, you would probably want to use hash as the sharding key. If it's, it's a name or a varchar or a var binary, you probably want to use the Unicode lose MD5, right? Um, there are some people who wanted uh, reverse bits, you know, they just wanted to uh, reverse the bits of the primary key. And so we built that, uh, that for them. So these are the predefined sharding functions. So you can choose a column, you can choose one of these functions and that allows Vitesse to calculate the key space ID for a given table, uh, for, uh, for, a, for rows in a given table. And that's what decides which row that particular uh, row, which shard that particular row is going to live in, right? So that's what sharding functions are. So now, having understood the, all these concepts, uh, let's go to the problem at hand that we are trying to solve. Now, before I jump in here, let me once again ask Chris if there are any questions. You're doing just fine. All right. Since there are no questions, I'll move to the problem that we are trying to solve today, which is building a jurisdiction aware cluster, um, a database cluster that stores data for a given country in its jurisdiction. The client application need not be aware of jurisdictions, right? Um, this is important. So you, need, you don't need to re-architect your client applications while you re-architect your database uh, to comply with data locality requirements. So for this demo, we are going to have four jurisdictions and eight countries. The four, four jurisdictions are Americas, Asia, Africa, and Europe. And the countries, there are two countries that I have picked corresponding to those jurisdictions, right? So eight countries, four jurisdictions. And these jurisdictions map to cells um, that we say are uh, located in that jurisdictional area. So the cell that is located in the Americas is called US West. The cell that is located in Asia is called Asia One. 
the cell that is located in Africa is called Africa 1, and the cell that is located in Europe is called Europe 1. And what we are going to do is we are going to create a key space with four shards, uh, and we are going to instantiate one shard in each cell. And then we are going to use a custom geo V index. So this is a V index that I wrote. It took me about six hours to write. Um, uh, that, that's another cool thing about Vitesse that once you, uh, the Vindex is an, is, is an interface. And so you can write a custom V index with fairly little amount of effort that uh, implements the sharding logic that you want to implement. So it took me about six hours to implement this. And so this is a custom uh, V index that I call custom geo that distributes data correctly using the country field in each row. And uh, this is how we are going to design the cluster. Um, our V index will use a country to jurisdiction map um, that basically maps uh, countries to jurisdictions. And you can see this map, it's a JSON. Um, this is the sample dat data that we would be using. Um, Philip Roth and Gerish Tiengart are two of my favorite authors. So I picked them out for United States and then I went to Wikipedia and picked up authors from various countries. And so we have um, uh, two, two rows per country. Uh, and uh, um, without further ado, I can actually show you how this looks um, in practice. Uh, again, I assume there are no questions, otherwise Chris would have interrupted me. Correct, yes. All right. So I have uh, SSH'd into AWS and I have you know, four or five hosts here in which I'm gonna spin up this cluster. And as I said to you, what we are going to do is we are going to um, start a full Vitesse cluster. That means that first we, have, first we will start a zookeeper quorum, which will act as the topology server. Then we will start a VTC TLD, which is the control plane. Then we will start a VT gate, which is the stateless proxy to which our client will connect. Then we will start the VT tablet MySQL D combinations for the key spaces that we will use. And uh, once all this is ready, I will show this to you in, in more detail. Um, so I'm going to run this shell script called start cluster. And uh, this will do everything that uh, we had talked about. It started the three zookeeper clusters. Uh, it started the VTC TLD. And then now it's starting two different key spaces. There is one key space called lookup, which is a single sharded key space. And then we will start the actual uh, uh, sharded key space in which we will uh, store the data that we want stored. And v, if, you, if you see the V schema object passing by here, V schema is how an operator tells Vitesse about how their, how their uh, key space is sharded. So it, it tells you which, for each table in the schema uh, for that particular key space, you have to tell Vitesse which column to use for sharding and which sharding function you want to use for sharding the data in there. So all of these, you know, this is where we started uh, the sharded key space, uh, the, all the shards, and this is the V schema that we applied to this uh, key space called user DB. And uh, I would like to point this out to you here that we first define a V index that we are calling GDPR VDX and it's of the type geo custom. So geo custom is hard coded in the new code that I wrote saying that that's the type of the new index. And we are creating a GDPR v, uh, VDX of type geo custom here. And we are, this uses uh, data from this GDPR config that dot JSON uh, for mapping the countries to jurisdictions. 
And then what we are doing is that there is this table called customer, which is the only table in this particular uh, database. And we are saying that uh, use the column named ID and the Windex named GDPR VDX that we defined up here as the sharding function. So this is how the, the V schema works, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all this um, through the VTC TLD interface. Um, So you can see that this is the Vitesse control panel. You can see that there is, there is one lookup key space with one shard, which lives in US West. And then there is um, one key space called user DB, which has four shards, um, which lives shard zero to four zero lives in Europe. Shard four zero to eight zero lives in Asia. Shard 80 to C0 lives in US West, and shard C0 to dash lives in Africa, right? So there are four shards. Uh, each of them are instantiated in cells that are in different localities, right? Now let's take a look at how the schema for lookup looks like. So there are two tables in schema. One is called customer country map. So here we are keeping a map of the ID to country. And we are also saying that this ID is a sequence that is, um, so Vitesse has this cool feature called, so basically uh, in, in MySQL, in a single sharded MySQL database, you can use auto increment to get a unique ID for each row. Now that doesn't work if you have a sharded database because each, each of the shards can have the same ID if you just say auto increment. So um, Vitesse has a feature called sequences, which you can use to say, uh, to, to create an ID, which can be distributed across uh, multiple shards. So this customer country map, um, so, so that, that is the, that the, the table that backs those IDs is all, also lives in the lookup key space. Now let's change to the user DB. And then there are four different shards and each, each of the shards is gonna have the same schema. So this is the schema uh, for the customer table. There is the ID, there is a full name, there is a national ID, and there is the country. So national ID is basically my, I just thought that we need to put some PII, personally identifiable information. So national ID is the equivalent of social security number and the country itself and the primary key is ID. So th this is the, and if I go to any of the four shards associated with this key space, you will see that they have ident identical schema and you can see that there is a V index called GDPR VDX of type geo custom that uh, is applied to this particular key space. So now that you have seen this um, and you can see that there are zero rows in all of these right now, right? Um, because we haven't added any rows. So let's go back and let us um, uh, let us look at what data we are going to insert. And if you look at this data, it's basically um, this ID will not be used. We will be generating the ID, but the name there is the full name, uh, there is the national ID, and then there is the country. Um, and this particular uh, Python script for client gdpr.py is going to uh, read this file and it's going to insert it on the VT gate that is running on port number 15306 on this machine, okay? So I'm going to control C, control V and it connected to this VT gate here and it inserted all these 12 rows. So we are going to read these rows out from the database, but before we do that, we can also see here, if I refresh this, you can see that customer country map has 16 rows in it, in the lookup database, and in the user DB, each shard now has four rows. Uh, the question is whether they got into the correct rows or not, right? So, um, for that, what we are going to do 
is I'm going to actually connect to my, using the MySQL client, I'm going to connect to the VT gate and I'm going to run this SQL script called showgdpr.sql. So let's take a look at what's there in that script. So Vitesse allows you to either access a key space as though it's a single database. You can see here where it's saying use user DB. So if I say use user DB and select count star from customer, it's going to show me 16. But if I say use user DB dash 40, which is the dash 40 shard, and then say select star for customers, it will show me only the four rows that live in this particular shard. And if you remember, the first shard is associated with um, Europe. So you would expect for the first four rows to be from Europe, um, the second four rows to be from Asia, the third four rows to be from US and Canada, and the fourth rows to be from uh, Africa. Okay, so that's that's what we are doing. We are so let's let's run this um, show GDPR.sql. And as as expected, you can see that uh, France and Germany uh, rows have gone into the shard, which is located in a cell in Europe, the cell called Europe One. Then the Asian rows have gone into uh, a shard that was located in a cell in Asia called Asia One. The North American rows have gone into uh, the one called US West um, and the one in Africa have gone in Africa. And if I instead just treat it as a single database, I can see the count star as 16. So I also want to just um, uh, connect here to MySQL and show you how this looks. So this is just standard MySQL client. Um, this is a lie. Uh, the server version underneath that we are using is different. Uh, you can, there is a VTGate um, parameter that you can use to tell VTGate what it should return the version number as. Um, this was the first MySQL version that we supported. So that's what uh, a Vitesse server response as the version number but you can change this. We are actually running on a MySQL 5.7. Um, so if I uh, say use um, uh, customer, and I say select star from, no use, I should say use user DB. And I should say, select star from customer. You can see all 16 rows uh, the same at, at the same time. Um, if I say use user DB dash 40, select star from customer, it just shows me the four four rows in, in, in that particular shard. Um, so just wanted to show this to you. Um, and um, what is interesting here, there are, there are a few other things that I wanted to show um, is that the code for the geo custom, uh, yeah, I, I first wanted to show you the how the client looks like. So basically we are inserting into the customer country map first and then we get the ID that was generated and then we insert that row into the user DB customer. So this is all, it's, it's very straightforward logic. There is no, there is no uh, mention anywhere of the uh, cells or there is no mention anywhere of the jurisdictions. 
but that mapping comes from here. Um, here is where we are mapping the country to uh, country to uh, jurisdictions. So given a country, uh, we figure out what the jurisdiction is and then um, there is a range that is spanned by that particular jurisdiction. So depending on the offset of the country in this list, we uh, use uh, the byte that the, the, the byte corresponding to the range in that a particular jurisdiction and uh, this particular shard uses that byte as the first byte and then the user id uh, to and then hashes it to create the key space id so that all the uh, key space id is generated by any country uh, have um, you know, they fall in a particular range and that's how they end up being in the same shard. Um, so for those of you who are interested, this is, this is how it is done. Um, I could have just had, uh, you know, a byte associated with every country, but this gives you uh, some notion of adjacency and so on. So if, for example, UK was in Europe and if UK decides to leave Europe and get into its own, own jurisdiction, um, having it at one of the ends of the Europe's ranges would allow you to create an own jurisdiction for Great Britain. And that's why um, I, I have this, the jurisdiction ranges and so on, rather than hard coding a byte for each country. Um, and as you can see, you can do similar things with uh, zip codes. If California, as California's data locality laws uh, go into uh, effect, you could have uh, a California jurisdiction and rest of the US jurisdiction and do the mapping based on say the zip code uh, zip code field for your data. Um, any questions? Yes. Chris asks, can Vitesse be configured to support multi-tiered sharding? For example, each jurisdiction may contain a set of shards defined by an alternative key space. Absolutely. So the each, the, if, so only the first byte is used to decide the jurisdiction and the rest of it depends on the user ID. So if you have hundreds of millions of users in a single jurisdiction, uh, you, can, you can split that shard and you can put both of those shards in the same jurisdiction and the rest of the logic just continues to work. Hmm. Interesting. Any other questions? Uh, there are none in chat. <clears throat> that was the only one in Q and A right now. Um, I, hmm. How would you have, like you mentioned, California? How would that work if, like, how aware does Vitesse have to be of the underlying infrastructure, or how do you define that? I guess. Correct. So the way you would do it is that let's say that you would create a cell in Sacramento, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say that you create another cell, uh, say either in Oregon or maybe um, New Jersey. Right. Right. And uh, your application, uh, you know, you, 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 you have a table where people's addresses are and there is a zip code column, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay. Yeah, and then you write this JSON file which maps, uh, you know, it allows you to create uh, shards uh, for California zip codes, uh, mm -hmm. which get located into the shard that you have started in the Sacramento cell. Um, cool. Yeah. So it's it's about about a day's worth of work, and we are making this as general as possible. I mean, this is you know mm -hmm. while while I created this particular custom index, so I, I also wanted to show you. Uh, the Go code that does all this, which fits into the rest of Vitess. Um, and that's like 180 lines of code. Wow. And a lot of it was uh, boilerplate, but.
the guts of it are you know so this is this is this is all by boilerplate um mm. but the guts of it are you know here i'm calculating the byte for country so given a country this returns one byte mm -hmm. that i am prepending to the user id so here is the name that it, it we, we we used to define it mm -hmm. um and if i look for yeah so i first convert id to country by doing a lookup in the mapping table i get i get the country id is the input to this map function mm -hmm. i get the country then i get the byte for the country and then uh, what i do is that this is the hash of the id itself i use seven bytes out of that and then i append the country byte with with, with those seven bytes cool and then i hash it and and that means that so similarly if you are using uh, if you are using uh, one byte for california and another byte for the rest of the country uh, you would do the same thing mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, just as long as you yeah you make sure that your shards are uh, located and if you remember how the shards are named it was 00 to 40 so that that's basically a hex yeah. hex is, yeah slices of the uh, whole key space um, so and you you can keep splitting the shards as 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 you need to that's a cool stuff i think i mean congratulations on all the work put into you know push the test over to the graduation you know side of the cncf uh project framework too by the way the 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 <laughs> the amount of scale that i've seen people use test to handle is rather impressive so this this to me is just like next level fascinating um handling all the data uh locality rules just with you know boilerplate code kind of out of the box is awesome thank you yeah um any questions not right now no there are no questions uh, 15 people on the call besides all of us, you know, presenting and helping talking and so forth. So, um, is there anything else you want to talk about? You know, KubeCon, your party, anything? Yeah, come, come party with us, everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seems like a cool thing. Where is it again? Sorry, I missed yeah. the, uh, let missed me, the location. Yeah. Let me go here and let me. Give me one second. No problem. Take your time. Take your time. Oh, there's a question. What is happening? Sorry to make you change gears. What is happening if jurisdiction configuration change? Is it supported? For example, the test will migrate the data in the background. Ah, so like if you added a new data locality, said go here, how does that like affect the data that's already there? Correct. So you will... Uh, if you added a new juris jurisdiction, uh, so t there are two ways in which you can change it, right? You can either add a country to an existing jurisdiction mm -hmm. uh, or you can add a new jurisdiction, right? right? So if you add a new jurisdiction, you have to keep in mind that uh, you are using bytes. So let's say that a particular jurisdiction, that the way the way this has been set up is that uh, of the 256, each jurisdiction gets uh, a quarter, right? So 64, 64 values for each jurisdiction. That, that's the way it has been set up correctly. So mm -hmm. if a, currently, so let's say that a jurisdiction has 10 countries in it. Uh, when you add a new jurisdiction, the, the beginning, the start byte and end byte, you have to make sure that they start after 10. So maybe out of 64, you say that the previous jurisdiction gets 32 and the new jurisdiction that you are adding wherever it is, gets 32. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, you don't need to change anything. Um, similarly, Great Britain, I mean, the thing is that, the, 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 so in, in that case, everything works as expected. You don't need to copy data from one place to another. But let's say that Great Britain leaves European Union, mm -hmm. right? and gets out of a jurisdiction. That's a tricky problem to solve unless you had the forethought to put Great Britain either at the beginning or at the end of a, part of a particular jurisdiction. Mm, 
Okay. So you yeah. would have to do some kind of data move of some sort to coalesce yeah. it, maybe. Right. I mean, the, the, if you kept this in mind and you mm. have Britain as the first country, you can just split it up as a different as a different jurisdiction without moving any data because the byte associated with that country will not change. Right. Um, and Would you, you can split the existing shard to just have that key range be in UK and the rest of the key range in Europe. Would you think it'd be like a good practice to, if you have a data center in that country, like just go ahead and set it up as a cell, whether it's in a jurisdiction or not, just so you could predefine it potentially as a place? I think that's a, that, that would be a good idea. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's, I think that's good advice. Um, okay, cool. Thank you for the question, Seb. Um, yeah, so let me just quickly, I think I'm, I'm looking at the uh, wrong, yeah. So, so Kim just said, if you're okay with it, like we can open the question, like open the, uh, the, the voice up for all participants. Like if just 15 of us, like I'm pretty sure we can manage that. If you're okay with it. Sounds great to me. Yeah, let's do it. All right, Cam, hit it. Cool. So, allowed to talk, and they just have to um, go ahead and unmute their yeah. microphone. If you are muted and you want to talk, just unmute and ask away. Uh, again, the the Vitess AWS Planet Scale QCon kickoff party is Monday, November eighteenth, six p.m. to ten p.m. at we don't have the address here. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it looks, oh, it says Meze. I can look it up. Hang on. I got it. I will pull it into the chat. Just give me a second. Yeah. So if you have a question, uh, you know, this is uh, the test knowledge base with you here for the next, you know, 15 minutes or so. Please ask away. Here's the website and the address is, oh wow, they don't, hmm. So Meze Greek Fusion is the name of the place. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see, their address is, and have to click on the Google Maps link to find it. And of course, Google Maps is probably on Google infrastructure, so it's gonna be running a little slow today. Let's see, no offense to Google. Um, all right, where is it? There we Thank go, you, no problem. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, there's the address I dropped in the chat. Uh, the website is gaslampmeze, uh, M-E-Z-E dot com. Uh, if you have any questions about menu or anything else, head there. Um, you know, we're live right now. So if you have a question, unmute. And, you know, we could talk about MySQL, I'm assuming, Vitesse in general, CNCF project graduation, KubeCon, the whole nine yards. That's right, we're here. We're really excited to have graduated. Yes. Uh, question in the chat from Eric. I may have missed it, but were you able to describe how a schema change gets handled? So schema change basically gets handled uh, independent of how uh, the uh, jurisdiction aware clusters work, right? It's just stand. Vitesse has uh, uh, commands that allow you to uh, apply schema changes to a multi shard key space. Um, so it, it, it uh, sends the same DDL to all shards in parallel. Um, some people in production also use tools like GHOST or uh, PTOSC to do uh, online schema changes. And uh, there are plans to build support for uh, online schema changes in Vitesse itself uh, using uh, the new V replication feature. Nice. Does that cool. answer the question? Uh, Eric, does that answer your question? You can say yes by hitting unmute. I'll yes. say yes. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Cool. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I guess we can wrap this up. Okay, I'll stop the share. There you go. All right. 
Okay, cool. Uh, I think I will close this out if you're okay with it, Tim. Sounds good. Thank yeah, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Lots of information. Uh, lots of demo. So thank you to the demo gods for being thoughtful there. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, contact Shaten or myself. Uh, and, you know, we look forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar, and we hope you have a great day and a great week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. You too. Bye, everybody.